Welcome to Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, a weekly horror movie review podcast. I'm Tani Ray. And I'm Felicia Connor. Subscribe to get new episodes every Wednesday. We dive into trivia, drink a little whiskey, and of course, give our no BS opinions. Join our Discord server or message us on social media to talk all things scary. And if you like the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can find all these links on our website, twochicksinahorrorflick.com. Thanks for listening. Now let's get scared. Hello, hello. We are talking about Inside Tonight. Uh, It's not called Inside Tonight. It's called Inside. Is it actually also called The Inside? Or is, am I crazy? I don't know. (laughs) We don't know what we're talking about tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Because the French name is, has like an extra word. Le? Le, which I think means the. Yeah, but I think a lot of words all have that, whatever that thing is called. It's the, Mm. the, the beginning piece the little intro <laughs> the little intro word uh please excuse me for anybody who's like Sacre bleu. <laughs> she does not know what she's talking about that was a horrible french accent but forgive me for that too um, um so the english one look it just says inside i think all french words have those little they don't just have the word for inside it has to have the what is it called i don't know what it's called i it's don't know either yeah participle <laughs> sure i'm make, i'm making all that shit up um so we're watching inside and it the 2008 2007 2008 version so that's what we are doing and we're glad you're joining us for this fucking adventure um but before we start <laughs> tony what are you drinking um i am drinking some vodka Mixed with an Olipop, because that's the only thing that I had. And so it's a grape Olipop mixed with some vodka. And that's the Kirkland brand vodka. I can't remember if we talked about this, but Jade got some as a gift from one of his uh, clients. And it is very good. You told me that before. And it's gluten-free, which was surprising. What are you drinking? I am drinking whiskey. Oh, nice. I am drinking this special... Angel's NV. That is so fancy. Strength. It is. It's very fancy. I think he said that this was $400. <gasps> oh so my God. We don't, I don't know. He was feeling generous. Let me <laughs> drink a little. He didn't open it for me. If we had a glass for some reason back but you'll notice it's all shut up again so like closed so when i'm done with this it's not like oh let's fill it up again right i'll okay. need to take a break and wow how fun november friendsgiving was yes yes, yes. that's exactly where i was going as i was about to say <laughs> how this is fun to talk to you alone because <laughs> it's been what probably five weeks episodes ago mm-hmm at yeah. least because end of october yeah we had guests we had yeah yeah you're right wow it's been six weeks i think since we yeah. did a solo well a duo episode <laughs> <laughs> but it was so much fun if you haven't checked out those episodes go check them out we had wonderful wonderful guests all week it, or all month yeah. it was super super fun yeah it was a blast i really enjoyed it and it's fun just chatting with you too just yeah. sitting down and chatting. Little less pressure, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> if if anything gets loud in my house, let me know because we have a bunch of people here for Thanksgiving. Oh, OK. I don't hear anything yet. but OK, good, good, good. How was your Thanksgiving? I was just about to ask you the same thing. <laughs> um, it was all right. Jade's whole family had the flu and <sighs> we weren't feeling great because we went and got some like the flu shot and a booster. So, which kind of knocked us out, I think doing both of them at the same time. So we ended up just staying home yesterday. Mm. Just kind of and, sad. And watching inside. Yes, that is <laughs> part of what I did yesterday, which was, we'll get into it. Very, uh, just crazy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But how was yours? Um, it was the same. We actually, so that the, um, 
kids could all stay here because our oldest wanted to see some of her friends since she's been in college. Their dad and and uh, his girlfriend and brother came over. So this was the first time that Steve and I made Thanksgiving dinner. We usually go to his mother's house. Oh, and okay. so we did everything. Turkey, ham, green bean casserole, stuffing, candied yams, mashed potatoes and gravy and salad. And wow. I, we were beat at the end of the evening. I'm sure. But it was a success. I feel like it was a success. And we had uh, lunch and dinner leftovers. Uh, and I also watched inside. So after we ate dinner, I snuck away and watched inside. Okay. Yeah. We watched um, in addition to inside. Uh, yeah. Well, which I watched by myself, but Jade and I watched, I don't want to jump too far ahead here, but I'm very excited to talk about it. No, let's get into it. We watched Army of Thieves, which is a like prequel slash spinoff movie from Army of the Dead. And it was so fucking good. I think I liked it more than Army of the Dead. Have you seen that one, Felicia? No. That's okay. why. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that's You're just like, nodding. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's real cool. Because Army of the Dead is like a zombie movie, right? And I'm not yeah. going to ruin anything by telling you the premise. They're, they go down into Las, a Las Vegas vault to open a safe. And um, the safe cracker in the movie, Dieter, this is a movie about him. Like before all of that stuff happens. And I felt like he was one of the best characters in the whole movie. So it was like really cool to watch a whole spinoff movie of him. And it's like another heist movie. Oh, I like heist it's movies. Real fun. Highly recommend it. Oh, nice. What about you? What have you been watching? Oh, I just watched at least one episode because we have a house of people. The great season mm. two. Super Super excited for that. I had to wait because my oldest daughter watches it with me. So she's here this weekend and I think we're going to binge it all tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> try to get it, try to get it done before she goes back to college. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get I, I just in. love it. I love the characters and me too. So I'm so excited to start it and Jay just won't do it. He's like, he keeps being like, once we start it, we're going to binge it. I'm like, uh, duh, let's just do it. So worth it. I know. It's a good binge. So I'm very excited about it, but he keeps trying to get me to watch all these animated shows. I'm, it's not that I hate them. It's just that they're not really like my thing. So he started watching that League of Legends Arcane and had me watch an episode. And uh, I was kind of excited about the Cowboy Bebop one. So we, we watched an episode of that. And he's like, we need to finish some of these things before we start the other show. But I'm like, but I'm most excited to watch The Great. So... Yeah. So we need to, my daughter's really into the animated stuff and I've watched some with her. Um, the longer series is hard for me. I did watch that promised Neverland. Um, and I could do the movies, but you know what else I watched that I want to throw out? Oh yeah. Yeah. I really loved this movie too. We watched the harder they fall, which is that new, um, Western. It's got like Idris Elba, Lakeith Stanfield, Regina King, mm -hmm. like all star fucking cast. I'm not usually into Westerns, I think, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe I need to not say that because I do enjoy like a modern Western when it's like pulled off well. And this was a delightful movie. It gave me like major Quentin Tarantino vibes. The dialogue was good. It was like funny in some parts. All the characters were fucking good. Like they've got to be planning to do something similar, like what they're doing with Army of the Dead, because Army of the Dead was like an ensemble cast and they broke off and did that movie Army of Thieves. And they're planning on at, at least two other movies, like one of them is going to be an animated series and the other one's going to be a movie about like a sequel after what happened in Army of the Dead. And it's smart to have like so many good characters so that you can do like other stuff with them, create kind of a franchise. I think that's kind of where people's heads are at right now and i felt that way at the end of uh the harder they fall i was like all of these characters were phenomenal i would watch a spin-off movie about any of these people very very exciting highly recommend oh. that one too nice okay you watch some good stuff i have also as you know and i'll take this out in case you want me to uh uh-huh been on a romance kick 
Felicia oh, no. knows this. Hell yeah, let's bring it on. <laughs> and Felicia wanted me to watch Shakespeare in Love. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's nervous. Look at her face. No, she's like, not ready for this. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> Please be my friend after this. <laughs> You did not like it. I had to turn it off, dude. I just turned it off like halfway through. I was like, really? I cannot with this fucking movie. Why? It just, because it was Shakespearean? No, that's like, I don't think that's the problem. It was like so silly. It was so silly. And I think the thing, my, the biggest thing was like, I had these expectations going in that it was going to be like a very serious romance movie. And so then I get in there and it's like super silly. There's it's like so comedic. Yeah. In the beginning, but it does get really serious. Yeah. Okay. It, Tor- it wasn't up until where I, when I watched and I just, I was like, I cannot take this guy, Joseph Fiennes, I think is how you say his name, right? Fines, I think. Fiennes? Joseph Fiennes. Yeah. He's the guy who plays the fucking worst guy in Handmaid's Tale. Yeah. Um, what is his name? Commander... Fred when Fred what's his fucking name I don't remember his name Fred commander I don't know it's not coming to me sorry (laughs) I should know it it should be popping in my head but he plays the main guy he plays Shakespeare and I could not take his ass seriously like I mean I think he's supposed to be silly in some moments oh yeah it is it is comedic there's lots of comedic right. portions throughout yes i'm like these motherfuckers it's definitely like a shakespeare play in a movie about shakespeare writing plays okay it's so totally maybe the experience is a is a shakespeare play with the satire and the drama and the, all of that but w- within a movie about shakespeare writing plays about all that okay so maybe oh, yeah. i didn't like that part of it yeah okay that's fair that's fair i thought you meant like the period piece part of it i don't mind that so much you know what i mean like the, oh yeah no because yeah no i meant more of like how it was like a shakespeare play yeah okay so maybe i didn't like that but i just there were so many moments where i was like what in the fuck is happening we've already talked about one but it's not just that uh, there's several moments in this movie where people are like acting like they don't know who the fuck this other person is And I'm like, this is ridiculous because then later you've got him, William Shakespeare, dressed up in some place and he's got like just a cloth pulled over his face like this. Oh, he's a woman. Do you remember? Yes, when they go to the party. And he's like, 50 pounds. It was just, I was like, (laughs) this is so ridiculous. (laughs) All right. Okay. I I love that movie for the record just because everyone's listening. It has some of my favorite like love quotes and um i just i fell in love with that movie and the <laughs> love that they have no no it's Sorry, okay i didn't like it I, it's definitely it's okay i need to maybe give it another try later when now that i know what to expect because i was ready for it. some fucking you know what i mean i thought it was gonna be yeah. real serious real hot and heavy i thought it was gonna be a steamy because the only thing i know about it is this poster that used to hang in one of my like fucking high school classes which is weird saying that out loud now i don't know why it was there (laughs) must have been an english or something class i don't know but it was just like two people about to like kiss Kiss. Mm -hmm. and then you get in there and it's like yeah just this oh it gets so passionate silly silly i don't know sad and conflict you know just like all of shakespeare's plays conflict with the love and and all of that weird Anyway, hmm. I'm sorry. Still I know, be I my just, friend. I probably didn't prep you good enough. It's probably my fault. I probably didn't prep you good enough for it. Well, you didn't know what my expectations were either. So it makes sense for you to not prep me, you know? Because you know what now the movie I is. Know. Now I know that if it's kind of like silly, satirical Shakespeare Bro. stuff that I so prep silly. you. <laughs> There's like a scene where he's holding onto this giant pillar. Yeah. Lots of passion, Tawny. Like <laughs> lots of passion <laughs> stupid dude he's like watching him act he's he just like madly crazy deeply in love oh, i can tell that from, <laughs> <laughs> from the movie <laughs> oh, shit. just was i think it was just overacting you know and exactly like what you're saying it is like very shakespearean in the way that it's like stage acting and then within yes. the movie it's like stage acting on top of that it's just not my jam Okay. That's fair. That's fair enough. Yeah. I see a, like a lot of those Shakespeare movies, movies made about Shakespeare plays, 
um, are very much that way. Except, I mean, fucking Hamlet. Holy shit. Do you see that with Mel Gibson? No, I don't think that so. That wasn't like that. That wasn't like a, Isn't it a Shakespeare play. Serious? It was fucking, yeah, hardcore. Okay. And now I'm starting to read On Writing by Stephen King, which Felicia <gasps> has recommended to me 8,000 times. Fuck, I love this. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Oh, and I downloaded um, Salem's Lot as my oh. first. I think I told you about that, though. I forgot. Stephen King book, everybody. Yeah. Let's celebrate with Tawny. Ah, she's <laughs> popping her Stephen King cherry. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, so whenever I, <laughs> I just want to share really quick that when somebody's doing something new, the first thing that comes into my mouth it, or it's come to, comes to my mind is... You popped your cherry. And this is a line from my second favorite movie of all time, which is Goodfellas. Oh, okay. And the kid gets arrested. And when he gets out of court, all the gangsters are there and they're like, you popped your cherry. But the problem <laughs> is nobody knows really that's what I'm talking about. So when I yeah. say it, it seems inappropriate. So I just want to clear the air. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about Goodfellas when I say that. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Not a pervert. Not a pervert. Good fellas, Just. Joe Pesci. Okay, we're talking about <laughs> Joe Pesci, Ryan Ray, Ray Liotta, good fellas. Balls right. to the wall. Robert De Niro too, right? Yeah, that sounds De right. Niro. I don't know. Have it's fucking seen it. amazing. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you would like. It. Do you like uh, mafia movies? Uh, I I I think so. I honestly don't think I've seen very many of them. Drugs. I mean, sure. I don't like okay. I don't like watching people who are like hooked on drugs. That's one of the things that like really deeply oh, like the movie Spun or something like that, me. where it's just all about drug addiction and how they're feeling. Probably like okay. I haven't seen that, but definitely like um, what's that other fucking movie that people talk about all the time? Requiem for a Dream. Yes. Yep. That Requiem one's pretty disturbing. Dream. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I, like drugs themselves and like drug runners and stuff doesn't bother me as much. It's just that I haven't really I seen them. I think it them. would be more like that. But I mean, they do coke, you know, yeah. and it's obviously a problem, but it's not about cocaine addiction per se. It's about that kind of mafia world and Lifestyle. everything going at, on. Yeah. yeah, that wouldn't bother me. I mean, cocaine is a huge problem yeah. in it, but it's not like... Like Spawn or Requiem for a Dream or a movie about drug addiction, I wouldn't say. Not at okay. all. I'd probably like it. I don't know. I just, it, it's not my go to. I don't remember. The only movie that I can tell you that I watched about gang members is this movie called Shatas. And I remember really liking it. But Shatas. I saw it once a hundred years ago. Yeah, I think it's about like Jamaican, um, like drug oh. people. I don't know. I love I don't that remember much. I don't love the real stuff. But I love all those mafia movies I've seen. I do like it about like drugs and drug running. I loved Narcos, mm -hmm. um, all that type of stuff. I find fascinating and entertaining. Yeah, not in the real world. Sorry, anybody who's affected by it personally. <laughs> Obviously, big problem. <laughs> it's, it's a huge problem. Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you, Tawny. After watching this, I was kind of happy we were only doing two episodes this month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, explain. Why? Okay. <laughs> I'll explain why. So um, back in September, we did like... Many French, moons ago. <laughs> French extremity, <laughs> the new French horror extremity, all the different words they call it. Um, we did a run like a whole month, aka half a month. Because then we had a guest and we had something else going on. So we did two weeks of this French horror. And so now we're finishing up the month for two weeks of French horror. And then we will be taking a winter break. And so just taking some time to travel, be with family for the holidays. Um, and so you'll get, for sure, you're going to get two. <laughs> we're yes. going to go by the seat of our pants. It's going to be a whim. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a surprise. Um, and they're both going to be this... French extremity. And the next one is Martyrs with a podcast on Elm Street. So nervous to watch the movie, excited to talk to those guys. Yes. Yeah. And so you're nervous about it just because you're oh, worried about as fuck. watching that many gory movies. Yeah. Yeah. It's like viscerally, intensely, disturbingly gory. A yeah. F. 
And so I'm nervous. I'm that's why I'm nervous of what I'm, I'm going to see. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fair after this watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. It's I'm excited. It. I'm super excited for martyrs, but okay. yes, let's I just am go. Too. I am very excited. I'm excited and nervous. Yeah. I don't, you know, it's just how it is. That's fair. No, I think that's a very okay normal <laughs> way to feel. <laughs> I was telling everybody, I'm like, after this movie, okay, so I, um, I, like I mentioned, I have fan. I have family here. And so I came, stuck away into my room, watched the movie, walked out. And everyone's like, oh, how was it? Because just the way that I looked. Right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck, guys, fuck. So here's the thing. Before going in, everyone's like, oh, we'll watch it with you. And I was like, no, 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 you won't. Yeah. <laughs> no. And so I watched it. I came out and everyone's like, oh, my gosh. And I think I was making people curious, but a little nervous. And so I said, okay. This is, this is my recap of it. We're going to have a better one with Tawny, but there's a woman who's pregnant. There's a woman who wants her baby and she has a pair of scissors. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's all I said. And everyone's like, oh, Felicia, stop it. <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> like, I'm done. I've heard I'm enough. Done. I've heard enough. <laughs> Can you even imagine oh that they God. watched it? I tried to describe it to Jade too. I was like telling him all about it. I was like, you're real glad you didn't watch this movie. Cause he was like, I was like, you want to watch this movie? <laughs> it's like, no, he, he likes horror movies, but this type of shit, the ultra gory, the body mm -hmm. horror, absolutely not, not for him. So he's like, no, I'm not watching it. So then I was telling him about it later and he's like, Oh God. I was like, yep. I told Felicia too. I, we don't usually talk about the movies beforehand, but I was like, you do not want to watch this with anybody else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and by that, I mean, no one else wants to watch this movie. Like, yeah, they might be like, oh, yeah, let's watch a scary movie. This. No, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is in a whole fucking realm of its own. Yeah. So we are talking about Inside from 2007 slash 2008. Um, we've seen it listed that way both places, but Inside French Film. I personally, oh, me and Tony actually both watched it on Amazon Prime. The director is Julian Murray and Alexander Bustillo or Bustillo, Bustillo. Um, now, those two, when I looked up what they've done, they seem like they always work together. And all it said was attached to Halloween 2 with Rob Zombie and Hellraiser. I don't know what that means attached to. And then I didn't spend a whole lot of time, honestly, guys, like yeah. digging into these two directors. So if you want to check them out, you can Google them. Uh, Eek, the budget was $2.5 million and the box office was $530,000. 530000 Ouch. Yeah. That is piss poor. I mean, what? It's really bad. I don't even know what the fraction of that would be. I don't either. Like at <laughs> least one fifth. Bad. <laughs> Very bad. Which it got really good reviews. Oh, interesting. Um, let me talk about later. But yeah, only 530. I mean, people aren't flocking to the movie theater to watch it. I mean, no fucking shit. Yeah. I, Shoot, I, I, I didn't even look up. Was it even in a movie theater? That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Was there even a the the theatrical release? I cannot talk tonight. Sorry. I told Felicia because we were like messaging back and forth just about which one, because there is this remake, right? So it was like, which one is the right one? This one's rated R, this one's rated NA or some or not rated. And I was like, no, it's, <laughs> she was like, oh, okay, I was nervous for the unrated version. I was like, bro, this one is pretty unrated. She was like, it has an R rating. And I was like, just so you know, that's like a French R. Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> Uh, oh, it looks like in, in the United States, it was uh, just uh, exclusively on video. Maybe that's why. Maybe because it didn't get a worldwide theatrical release. It didn't do as well. I don't know. I kind of get it, though. I mean, me too. Who I feel like fuck? it'd be risky if we see like the Harkins is releasing this film. Yeah. <laughs> it's intense. <laughs> hmm. But damn. That's oh, a yeah. Let's go as a family to watch a scary rated R movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's just no horror movie. Even just even horror movie fans. I mean, this is like level ten. <laughs> yes, over the top. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes gave it eighty five percent. IMDb gave it a six point seven out of ten. Letterbox gave it three point five out of five, and Amazon Prime gave it a four point two out of five. Hmm. 
It's a pretty okay. damn good. Um, and the only other thing, since we're talking about ratings, is a couple of quotes I have for people who rated it. <laughs> or what am I trying to say? We <laughs> both can't talk shit. It's been a long month and a long week. <laughs> I know. Um, so you know, tired. people that critics, critics, a traumatically enter- a traumatically entertaining experience, and. The film may be cruel, but it's executed with pure artistry. Haunting images carry their own grotesque beauty, and there is real emotion depth anchored by a pair of powerhouse performances from the dueling ladies. Those dueling ladies, uh, Alison Paradis is Sarah. Beatrice Dallet is La Femme. Jean-Baptiste uh, Tab- Tabarin, Tabarin is Matthew. And Natalie Roussel or Roussel Roussel is Louise. Those are like all the different fucking ways I can say their name. Um, and Louise <laughs> was Sarah's mother. And Matthew was like her boss friend. And then there was other people, but I didn't write them down. Okay. Yeah. Not that pretty... they weren't noteworthy. There was like lots of cops and, you know, different people that came in. Yeah. Not a lot. I shouldn't say a lot of different people, but. Yeah, it was a pretty Those tight were the cast. main peep. Yeah. yeah. Main peeps. All right, you heard my little one second summary. But now we go into two minutes with Tommy. Here we go. <laughs> uh, spoilers ahead, just in case you didn't know that. Okay. A pregnant woman, Sarah, is in a car accident with her husband that kills him. Luckily, she and the baby survive. After the crash on Christmas Eve, Sarah is spending the night at home. Her boss is a nice man helping her out and has a spare key to her place because he'll be driving her to the hospital tomorrow morning to be induced. That's important later. While alone, someone knocks on the door and asks to come in. Sarah, a very smart cookie, doesn't let her in, though. So the stranger at the door reveals she knows Sarah's name and she knows that her husband is not home because he is dead. She calls the police, who come and take a look around, but they don't find anything. Sarah goes to sleep, but this mystery woman sneaks into the house and sterilizes some scissors, which she uses to puncture Sarah's belly button. Oh, so gross. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking horrible. (laughs) This obviously shocks Sarah awake, who manages to get to the bathroom and lock herself inside. Over the course of the night, many people come to the house, but they all get murdered. First, it's Sarah's boss, who gets genitally mutilated with the scissors and stabbed repeatedly in the face. But honestly, he gets stabbed everywhere. Like, he's just totally um, fucked up by these scissors. Then it's her mom, who Sarah accidentally kills with a pair or with a hair accessory stabbed through the neck. Then it's not one, but three cops who all meet their end at the hands of the psychopath. Then it's a perp who tagged along with one of the cops who gets the scissors through the skull. (laughs) Last alive is Sarah, who is like in labor, bleeding from being beaten in the stomach and looks like she's on her last leg. But this mystery woman makes the mistake of lighting a cigarette when she thinks she has won. So Sarah torches her face by spraying something flammable like an aerosol can. After calming down from half her face being melted, this woman reveals she too was pregnant and was in the same car accident which caused her to lose the baby. This is why she wants Sarah's baby as a replacement. They fight until Sarah says she's giving birth, but the baby feels stuck. The woman performs an emergency C-section with the scissors. Sarah presumably dies on the stairs where she gave birth and we end with a shot of the woman holding and rocking the baby. I like him holding myself right now. <laughs> like just remembering it. Just remembering it. All right, Tawny. Thank you for that. How did you feel about this movie? This was a gory, gory one. Maybe one of the most gory movies I've ever seen. And I have to say that I think i liked it i'm excited to hear the research and how you felt about it i don't know why i'm coming to the table lately with such like undecided feelings i feel like right up until the last like four weeks 
I come into our conversations like very opinionated. <laughs> so I don't know what's happening just over the last like month or whatever. I'm just kind of, I'm willing to be swayed in whatever direction. But overall, I think I really liked it. I really liked, I think, where I thought they were going. You know what I mean? Like, I liked the premise. I have got to say also, this is the fucking female slasher of my dreams slash no. nightmares. Obviously, yeah. she's terrifying. Yes, yes. But that's what makes her so fucking good. Fuck, yeah. There, I don't know if there's a... I don't know if I can come up with a female slasher rival to this fucking woman. This was terrifying. This was like a whole new level for me. Like, I feel like, you know, you usually get... And you you they give her a sympathetic edge here a little bit, or they try to. They try to explain, like, why she's doing what she's doing. <laughs> yeah. But holy shit, this is scary. Yeah. Scary lady. So anyway, I loved that part of it. Just I was like, this is what I've been asking for. But I can't help but feel like it was just a maybe a little too over the top. Like it was so fucking gory and over the top that I feel like it kind of lost its sting a little bit, like through the movie. Like I kind of had it. I started to like tune out a little bit just because I was like, OK, more of this, you know, like more. What the fuck else can we think of? <laughs> That's like, so, I mean, this movie has got everything. Everything that you don't want to watch What is what I mean. Like yeah. pets dying, pregnant woman being assaulted horribly in horrible ways, somebody's Ugh. face exploding, genital mutilation. Like I'm telling you, it's got everything that you don't want to watch. Yeah. It's, and so I just, I kind of, it got to the point where it almost felt comical because I was like, okay, this is, you know, this just fucking next level, dude. Like, I don't know, but I think I liked it. Anyway, that's where I landed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I gave you so much. No, on the that's overall. great. No, that's great. But um, how did you feel about it? I think I feel the same way. Like there were things I really liked. There were things where I thought, come on. Yeah. Um, but then it got me back into it. There was also the whole thing where, you know, I really wanted this pregnant woman to get away. But then on the other hand, how it ended, there's something to say about that too. You know what I mean? So I felt yeah. like it was hopeless and I wasn't satisfied. Like, okay. So when she was in the kitchen and she got the knife and she shoved it into that, wherever, whatever that pole was, the pregnant woman, Sarah, and she stood up fucking now because the woman also stabbed her in the face, like yeah. her face was gashed open. So now the whole top of her white nightgown is pure, red. vibrant red. There's not a stitch of white. And she's standing there in the doorway with that fucking homemade spear. And I literally almost slacked Tawny. This is going to be my new favorite final girl. <laughs> yeah. But she was not a final girl. Uh, well, but don't final girls have to survive? Yeah, but I felt like it was kind of un... It was not. She was done. I mean, she seemed like she, she would have died. She did not have a sec C-section. <laughs> she was butchered open. <laughs> I mean, it was yeah. technically, yes, it came out of the belly. <laughs> but, well, fuck. but in that last oh. moment, you see a tear like roll from her eye. And so I wasn't sure if that was them trying to be like, I mean, it's obviously like a blood. It looks like blood because she's, but she's covered in blood. So I didn't know. Is that a tear? Is she you still know what alive? I thought it was? What? I thought it was her last final breath and how horrific that she hears the baby crying. So she knows her baby was born. She knows this woman has her baby. And, and now she... these are her final moments. Ooh, okay. So that's the last thing that she gets to know is she can't even protect her baby. She's done. That's fucking terrifying. And then she's done knowing Ooh. that her baby made it. Yikes. That's even worse than what, what I thought. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Nail on the coffin right there. Um, hmm. So there was not, there was one piece of trivia. Oh, shit. Hit me with it. The movie was shot in chronological order. <laughs> <laughs> so 
see, that's why I did it. <laughs> so but within the, within the spoiler spoilers, there was like one thing, uh, the scene where the three policemen check on Sarah, you can see that the house number is six, six, six. Yep. I wrote that down as a note. That's it. Huh? Wow. So, okay. It's just going to be all about how we feel. Wow. I'm really surprised there wasn't more. I'm surprised. Yeah. At the very least, there wasn't more about like the reception of this movie. There was about the reception. So the reception though, but it wasn't anything like you'd think. Like what movie did we watch where people were vomiting and had to be dragged out and people were yeah, fainting? It was, raw. it was oh raw. Okay, that's right. No, well, nothing like raw that. Was one of them. Yeah. Majority of the reviews were positive um by critics. They thought it was one of the best horror films because it was truly, truly grotesque and disturbing, but the performances were so good. Like it was received really well. There was no, oh, we made vomit bags for you going right. in. No, nothing <laughs> yeah. special like that. Nothing special, just that, you know, critics thought it was um really well done and disgusting. And that's it. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. I don't know. This let's get into it. Yeah. This um I could tell you I'm sure we're gonna I, have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah, I do have a lot of notes, so that's good at least. Um I can just start with I really enjoyed the acting. Yeah. I thought that Sarah well, she was miserable, but she um, you know, for the most part, you can tell she was depressed. She wasn't even super excited to have the baby. So there was just a lot of emotions going there. And the woman, La Femme, she was terrifying. She was absolutely, she was my favorite because just the rage, like when she was slamming, slamming, yeah. slamming the scissors into the wall and then kicking the door. Like it seemed like when she was recording, she was literally, literally just overflowing with rage. Yes. It, she was fucking scary also the way that she like stalks around and her like whore, whole whole wardrobe is scary but without being like i don't know i feel like she has to take the cake as far as like scariest like female <laughs> horror icons that aren't um supernatural you know yeah. what i mean like, yes has got to take the cake terrifying especially by the end of the movie where her face is like half burned fucking scary mm. i i you're right about the acting there wasn't a moment where i thought somebody was doing a bad job it was i was engrossed in that way and these characters like you said amazing the the uh, motivations i feel like are really believable all of that is good the setup you know super fucking scary it's just this woman. Yeah, she really, really. She's terrifying. Yeah. One of my favorite, favorite was when she emerges out of the dark. Ooh, in um, that hallway. Doorway. Yeah, the dark hallway. Because the first time I didn't see it until Sarah kind of sat up, then I could tell there was someone behind her. So I rewound it just mm -hmm. to see. And how you see her emerging and then when she sinks back, once you know she's there and you can very just slightly see her face, fucking love that. Loved it too. That's my favorite type of scare. The slow build. Like, oh shit, somebody's yeah. there. They're right there. So they did ugh. a great job with this home invasion movie, making you feel scared. Like even scared too, because Sarah does what you would do. She called the police. The police came. She told them about it. Right. So, and that, she didn't open the door. So it. It's you can't say, oh, g give me a break. You yeah. know, she did everything. The only thing is, I feel like I would leave. I feel like if, if because she broke her back door. So it's not like it was just some woman trying to scare her. But um, uh, when she was at the slider and she smashed it and it started to make the, the door crack. Mm -hmm. Just that in it of itself, I probably would have called my mom and left um because first of all the window's broken <laughs> so you know yeah. me i'm not gonna fucking stay there um but also that was intense to do it's not like she was just messing with her she yeah. literally broke her window but it wasn't so off-putting because i also it also is very clear that um sarah doesn't want to be around people 
So maybe she did figure this one, but just so the woman knew everything about her. So there was that level too, that she knew everything about her and broke her window. She probably won't come back, but probably fucking will. Oh, I'd be scared (laughs) enough to leave. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Yeah. good point. I feel like there's a lot of that in the movie, even though I think it, I will say for like right off the bat, I think it does do a very good job of having people make logical decisions I can't help but still have those moments all the way throughout the movie where I'm like, shit, I would have done something different. And my first one is when she answers the door and she's like, you know, she she kind of lets on that she knows that she's alone. She knows her name. She knows that she's alone and her husband died. I like that she stands there in shock for a little bit. But as soon as I got over the shock, I would be running to every other door and window on the yes. first floor to make sure that it was locked. That would be number one right so the fact that she doesn't just take off and start trying to lock stuff kind of bothered me but i liked that she turned off the lights because that is another thing i'd do Mm -hmm. i'd go make sure everything's locked and then i'd turn off all the lights so that no one could see what i was doing inside the house this is one of those movies that i think really it just immediately triggers the uh survival questioning you know like what would i do in this situation that's what i would do and then she calls the cops and as soon as the cops came and decided there was nothing there i would also leave no matter how much i didn't want to be around people goodbye or i'd call somebody over or something something man yeah i a hundred thousand percent agree when that happened i said lock the doors make sure the doors are locked that's immediately what i said yeah um, at first when she, when the woman was at, in the glass or at her back window or sliding glass door and she started taking pictures, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, oh no, that's smart. You're getting a picture of the lady. Um, so that was fine. I wasn't too upset with that. The, the only other thing was, and I was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. This woman that Sarah has is pregnant. She's in labor. Her water is broke. Her face is completely gashed open. Her hand has been stabbed. She's just tore up yeah she makes her way down to the front door there's nothing there's no she didn't super glue the door just needed to be unlocked she does attempt to unlock it but can't manage it um so i'm like okay well this woman is probably very exhausted and dazed and so i was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt i just feel like you just gotta unlock the door and get out yeah Um, or go out the back door but instead she goes into the kitchen um which I understand then we wouldn't have got the whole burning your face off scene. And we, we needed that. We need that. Yeah. But there was a, throughout there. And then also once the woman's burned and in the closet, who is not going to stab her? Yeah. Seriously. You lost your baby. Sorry about that. But this fucking woman wants to cut your baby out with a pair of scissors. Yeah. She says, <laughs> and she's been fucking hunting you all night, right? All night hunting you at like take her out. And she even says right before, they get interrupted, right? She says, Sarah, I, they told me there were no survivors. Be like, and now there are, isn't going to be. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I can just kill her. Kill her. Yeah. And then even when the cop stands up and she's kind of very slowly walking towards the cop, the woman is burned. She's not like, her legs are not amputated yeah, she's off. Not she's incapacitated. I kept thinking too burned. that she was going to yeah. get her, you know, from behind, but not what happened so i am very very there is something secret about me about belly buttons don't touch my belly button okay i don't like when people touch their own belly buttons it's just like i fucking hate it like don't i don't touch mine it's sensitive i don't like when anybody (laughs) touches their own there was a freaking muppet babies cartoon it's like the Muppets, but they're babies. I'll, this disturbed me as I'm going to grow up. My kids were watching it. Okay. And like one of the Muppet babies was sick. And so all the little Muppet babies shrunk and they went into a syringe and were injected through the belly button. What the fuck? To go in and fight the illness that was in the other Muppet baby. And I was so disturbed. I'm obviously bringing up to you right now, years later. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> belly button thing. So when she stabbed that belly button, oh, I almost passed out. Oh. That's like <laughs> next level. Your face. Next level for me. Then fast forward to the end. Oh, man. We are this- stabbed. Ooh. <laughs> go, ahead. go ahead no 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 you go ahead 
we are taking the scissors, fully injecting into the belly button and cutting up the stomach like a piece of material. Yes. Oh, it was so gross. Even before she cuts the um, skin, though, I will say Mm -hmm. I don't have a belly button thing like you do. (laughs) (laughs) But I was like, oh, God, because earlier she got stabbed in the belly button, right? So Mm -hmm. like so she cuts open the material and you see this woman's like full pregnant belly and there's like gushes of blood coming out of the belly belly button from the earlier stab, which a is a great attention to detail on the continuity. Just amazing. Yeah. Very impressed by that. But B <laughs> fucking gross. Like one of the grossest. I mean, I don't know why that out of everything in this movie, like really disturbed me, but it did just because the idea of having this like open wound through your belly button right there. It's <laughs> gross. Oh, so bad. Okay. So I'm not lying. The whole time, this is where my notes are on this pad of paper. I watched that scene of cutting the belly like this. <laughs> so for you that can't see it, half of my face is covered by my notebook. There's only one eye watching. I was just, you see it all. I, I think so. so. I had to I had to hide a couple of times, but they just. Oh, they, yeah. Oh, you see it, everything. Right up. Yep. And she's screaming. <sighs> So much screaming. The screaming happened for so long, so dude. Long. I had to like turn it way down because I was like, Jade is going to be like, what the fuck are you watching out there? It's like 20 and minutes long or something. Yes. It's not that long, it's, but it's a long time. It's like uh, 10 minutes of screaming because she's in labor. She's like laboring and then she tries to make it up the stairs. Can't. Then she has an emergency C-section. I mean, it is. I boring. love how you just keep calling. I've, I. With my first baby, had an emergency C-section. Tony, <laughs> <laughs> that was an emergency butchering. Yeah, okay, you're right. Yeah. Oh gosh, but that was another piece when he was bashing her. The cop was bashing her in the belly. Oh with my that fucking pull, god! Preg- yeah, because even if someone's pregnant in a movie and they kind of fall, like maybe oh, they trip up. and fall, and like, oh, oh god, no, Dude, he in is- real life. If I see yeah. a woman who's like super pregnant, I cannot watch her. I can't because it makes me so fucking nervous. I'm terrified of the moment that I have to watch a pregnant woman fall over. So it makes me anxious. I, yeah. Like, and we've talked about this before. And just in case this is maybe your first episode of the first episode that we're talking about it, being pregnant is one of my worst fears. It, it is so scary to me. The idea is seriously disturbing. <laughs> Hopefully that offends no one. I don't care. I mean, but it no, just everybody, some people that's not offensive at all. <laughs> Whoever's like, that's crazy. Be pregnant at babies. It's all good. I mean, yeah, Tony like, can be scared of it. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm, but also I think it affects other people in the way that I'm like watching pregnant people being, I wouldn't Are you say judging mental, you know, dry heaving when no, you see No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, but it is like, oh my fucking God, please don't hurt yourself. Please don't hurt yourself. Yeah. Like I'm constantly, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. The That's whole like thing care is, and concern. Yeah. That's it's a very nice thing. Scary to me. And ugh, I did slack Tawny. Because <laughs> I knew I knew this about her, of course, yeah. and so I slacked her, and I'm like, I bet you don't want to have babies now <laughs> after watching this. I was like, I definitely didn't before this, but this movie did not help in any way. No. No. Yeah, because he hits her, and then it's just like blood and um, the water in the sack just gushing out as he's hitting her. God, awful. awful! No, no, no! I'm just I'm. My mouth is open <laughs> thinking about this scene. It's awful. <laughs> like, this is also one of the worst moments, I think, in my opinion. Because it's watching a, like nine months, I mean, she's about to, oh my God. Not to mention, we have She's even, in labor and he's bashing her in the stomach. Like, and she, it's just blood. Blood <sighs> is just coming. Oh, it is, again, one of the goriest movies I think I've ever watched in my life. Um, not to mention, we, we haven't even talked about this. There is a baby's eye view. We have a B E V A B E V. (laughs) Wait. Baby's eye view or a B P O V a baby's point point of view. view. Yeah, exactly. A B P O V. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag B P O V. (laughs) That was amazing. We said it at the same time. We've tried to do that before. We can't do it. No, we couldn't even say. <laughs> We've tried to do shit in sync. It doesn't work over the internet connection. But anyway, this was 
I mean, so nerve wracking. These shots that you get of the baby in the womb, like experiencing what's going on. (laughs) So fucking anxiety inducing. Hated it. And also loved it. I mean, I feel like it was really effective, you know? Yeah. I put that up here. I like that baby point of view. That's very creative. Um, Right off the bat when she's in the car accident, it's Mm -hmm. you're within this. It's kind of cool. You're in the womb with the baby and hearing the muffled sounds of the parents' voices. And then mm, you're jolted. Yes. First shot. Yeah. First shot. All the way, every time she's getting hit. Oh, and even don't they have one more when she's screaming and then she starts cutting the belly open? I don't remember. Mm, I, I don't, was, I, I was don't. in and out, guys, so covering my face. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I don't think there was one then, but there was uh-huh. one earlier when she was in the um, bathroom and she stabs her hand with the scissors into the mm, wall. That's there's right. Some, there's a lot of jostling, and that's one of those moments where they go in the womb and there's. You know, it's rocking around a lot. Oh my God. I'm just, I'm going back to that whole, um, I think when she, she died and you saw the tear, it was after the baby cried. And I think it was, I do feel like it was because she was dying and she knew her baby was alive. Because if you think about it, the baby didn't cry for a while. So as an audience, we don't even know if the baby's alive. As she's carrying the baby and walking towards the, it's not crying or anything. So did the baby make it or did she lose this baby too? What's going on? Then she sits down. Then you hear the baby cry. Then it shows the mom with the tear. And then, yeah, because honestly, you would hope this is going to sound horrible, but that maybe the, well, I guess, okay. I'm going to say at first, like if you're, you would hope to be able to escape and your baby be okay. If you are now dead, you're probably not hoping that your baby survived. So this fucking crazy, horrendous psychopath woman is now going to kidnap this baby and raise it. But on the other hand, like this woman was really massively screwed up. Like, yeah, I mean, she could still get away with the baby, but people are going to be, well, they're not going to be looking for her, I guess. How would they know? Well, maybe, maybe they, good investigators would go back to, now I'm thinking out loud, guys, go back to this woman survived this car crash. And now this woman, I mean, maybe, maybe they've got to hope. I mean, this lady's DNA is all over this fucking house. Oh, you're right. Her DNA is everywhere. She's burned. She's bloody. She got, yeah, stabbed. There's. So then they'd find the baby and be able to give the baby a good home. That's true. Hopefully. Yeah. But almost, I also feel like there's this element of like, yeah, obviously this woman doesn't want this total psychopath woman to take her baby, but the woman doesn't seem to have anything against the baby. So if the baby's going to survive, I feel like that is kind of a question of like, would you rather your baby die or would you rather your baby live and go into the hands of this crazy totally crazy person but she doesn't seem to want to hurt the baby so you at least there's some level of hope like somebody else will eventually pick my baby up out of this situation pick it up out of the situation yeah totally because yes the woman wants the baby and doesn't want to hurt the baby but the woman also has just (laughs) unmonitored amounts of rage and (laughs) rage and psychosis and just somebody that can do that. How long oh, are they going to be a good mother? And what kind sure. of a mother are they going to be? She killed so many random innocent people on the way to the baby, but she's not going to get away for very long. She has half of her face fucking burned off. Like, yeah, people are going to be like, whoa, she has to go to the lady? hospital or something. And you know? a new baby. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're totally right. Because this woman was fucked up before. Because you you can be massively depressed but guys to do what she did (laughs) yeah she was crazy before this and the despair and sadness just exasperated her craziness there's no way you just go to that level and are able to kidnap someone's baby or something like that yeah you know people you know possibly yeah people have done that People have kidnapped babies out of hospitals and stuff because they wanted their own baby. Um, but it's like with scissors, cut it out of someone's oh. torture someone. And <sighs> I got a story for you. 
Oh, shit. I brought my own piece of trivia. Oh, excited. Today. I'm scared. <laughs> excited and scared. Because um, this happened in Denver. And I just felt I like I remember it happening. And I was like, I have to tell Felicia. I'm sure there's so many stories about this. I'm just going to give you the quick um, version, though. Because this, yeah. de- this happened in Denver in like 2015, I think. So I was in college living there. And um, this woman who was pregnant was like communicating with another woman on Facebook about buying baby clothes. And she went to her house to like pick up the baby clothes. The woman assaulted her, uh, stabbed her, I think, choked her out. So she was like, unconscious, cut this baby out of her. She was seven months pregnant. And then her husband got home, found her with a baby covered in blood. And she had been like keeping up this ruse, I think, that she was pregnant. And she was like, I had a miscarriage. That's why there's blood all over me. You need to take me to the hospital. He takes her to the hospital with this woman in their house. Does he know she's there? He hasn't seen the dead woman. Okay. I don't think he knew. Yeah, I don't think he knew. Because he just took her straight to the hospital. The baby did not survive, which is very sad. And I, I can't, I couldn't find any information on why. I think it may be just because it was premature at seven months or some, like probably there just wasn't or enough. Or because she wasn't a doctor and yeah, didn't she know wasn't. how to fucking actually remove a baby from a pregnant person. Right. But she was like a doctor's assistant or something. So oh like gosh. she actually did like a not terrible job <clears throat> of cutting her open and performing this C-section, which is fucked. This fucking woman, though, survived and went and locked herself in a room and called 911 and like they came and got her or whatever. Um, The woman who attacked her has been sentenced to 100 years in prison. And this happened in Colorado. Isn't that crazy? I thought the baby survived from my memory, from my recollection. I thought both of them survived. But I really thought it was crazy when I had heard this story originally that the woman survived having an emergency. Like I keep saying emergency. It's not like a technical, but you know what I mean? She like didn't, this, she didn't have this an emergency. Is, this she is wasn't, for sure not an emergency. So just, I'm sorry. She had, <laughs> that right. baby did not need to come out at that time. <laughs> no, was, no, no, no. She was <laughs> slaughtered. Slaughtered. <laughs> yes. Cut open. <laughs> this woman who attacked her too, like she had had like, I think, uh, or her son, she had had like a son, a year, a couple years prior, who had died in an accidental drowning and was like distraught by it. Ended up having her tubes tied, which is crazy. And then, so then when she tells her... And then went and did that. Yeah, like, I I mean, I don't... I feel like in a way, as her husband slash boyfriend, whoever she was, she had as a partner, I feel like I don't blame him because I would also be like... But there's no reason to distrust i mean you'd be shocked by the sight in front of you and you'd just take them to the hospital you wouldn't think like no that my she's partner tricking me lured somebody here cut them open pulled this baby out never no. in a million years would your mind no. go there not unless she was talking about it all the time no you wouldn't but anyway i just thought that was interesting because it's not i there's a that's a story of a thousand i'm sure there's so many like that but if you want to look up more i'll put the link in our discord but the woman who attacked her was dinell lane and it was in colorado happened in 2015 and she's in prison for 100 years plus isn't that fucking crazy that's fucking crazy people fucking do crazy shit they kidnap babies try to pass them off as their own I remember I was terrified too, hearing stories like, um, that this woman, uh, she was, I don't have all the dates or anything, but she dressed up as a nurse and literally took an infant from inside the hospital while the baby sleep and slipped it in her tote bag and walked out. And so I remember being really adamant about my baby was sleeping with me. My baby was sleeping with me and I won't tell every, you know, share with you guys. You don't have to hear the horror, the how all the things that happened with my first baby. But there was at one point <laughs> this really nice big Irish nurse. I remember she used to lift me because because a lot of shit happened. My daughter's fantastic, um, but it was it was really hard. And um, I remember she's like, 
I, I can't do an Irish accent, so I won't, but she's like, I'm taking the baby and she's going to sleep in the nursery. And I was so drugged and so much pain. I'm like, nah, nah. And then she did and it was fine. The baby right. slept and I slept, but I was so scared that someone was going to steal her yeah. because there was another story where a mother was leaving with the baby and at gunpoint, they, they held her at gunpoint and took her baby. I was just terrified all around. Fucking who? I... I, the last thing in this world I want is a fucking baby. I just <laughs> Who is trying so hard to get babies, for I Christ's know, sake? I know. I'm like, why? It's definitely I mean, not a cakewalk. I get know? it, I guess. Like, people who really, I mean... I love shit. my kids, and it's hard AF. So... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then add on the fact that you have this baby. Not only is it hard, but it's not yours. Right. So now you have to put on this whole charade. You're living under this fear that you're going to get caught any day yes. as the baby grows. Yeah. How are you going to explain? Shoulder. Yeah. Mm-mm. How are you going to explain you don't have the birth certificate? How are you going to explain? How are you going to? Hey, it's like, get a dog. Oh, just, just get, get a, dog. a dog. For Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I did want to say, going back towards the beginning ish, I liked, I didn't like how Sarah used the camera at the end because there's no way being in the state you're in, you're going to have a good grip on that spear and on this camera. But I did like the flash effect in the very beginning when she was taking a picture of the woman um, standing outside of her uh, slider. And then you see from behind the woman. So it's just the whole screen is the outline of the woman's head. And there's this flash coming from inside the house. I thought that was really cool. Me too. There's a, a lot of really good imagery, I feel like, in the mm-hmm. movie. I like that, right? And one of the other things that I liked is the house itself and how there's these, mm. you know, pockets of light. Like, you can see the skylight from the bathroom and they keep cutting to this, like, wide overhead shot of the house. And you can see that she's in the bathroom because the light is on, right? Or, like, the triangle of light in the front of the house, in the foyer. It's like, yeah, all of that is really interesting i thought that that made it very um uh it helped the sense of dread because it almost made it feel like she's being watched we're watching her there was the sense of she's being stalked by this this view of the house and knowing where she's in the house and what she's doing just based on the light like you're explaining oh totally yeah um and there's this continuing theme of looking through something right like i think you know she looks through the knitted thing that she's making and then she looks through the door that she the like people. yeah oh and the, oh, people. Even the people yeah and i i, I mean it's got to be a you know it's got to be related to being in the womb and like oh yeah looking out that way and oh, yeah. and also the word inside, right? Like there's several layers to that. The the baby is inside her stomach. Like, she's inside the house. She's, she's inside, inside the, the bathroom. House. Yep, inside <laughs> the bathroom. And so anyway, that's where I was going with that. Is the, I love is that. the lights? You know, they're kind of I don't know another version of that same thing. It's looking out from the inside where you are. Yeah. Ooh, stalking what's inside. Yeah. Wanting what's inside. Mm. That's scary. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of moments in here that I can recognize are somewhat symbolic of things. I just don't know that I am (laughs) equipped or smart enough to make the full picture. You know, like I I'm sure there's somebody out there who's done an extensive analysis of this movie. But something that I noticed also is that the outside of the house is covered in greenery. It's like covered in ivy and all these vines like crawling up, which is the opposite of red, which is womb like. Right. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of like womb like imagery too. everything's red. Yeah. And dark and kind of, you know, encapsulated. I feel like especially the last shot. Right. Where she's holding the oh, baby yeah. in the. But I don't know what that means or what it has to do with like the 
I mean, obviously, <laughs> that theme may make sense in the movie, but I don't know what the movie is trying to say with it necessarily, I guess, is where I'm going. I wonder if that's exactly it. Is it's just imagery that matches all the different perspectives and it's not really trying to say much more, but you know, this woman wants this baby. This is pretty fucked up situation, but yeah. all the perspectives of like this womb, like in imagery and how we're talking about inside and all of this. Um, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't find anything. There may be something out there of, of course, of but like if somebody did a more in depth re- um, what am I trying to say? Analysis, like you said, of this. But maybe that's all it is, is that it is just perpetuating this imagery and these ideas throughout the film without trying to say something deeper yeah, about society or anything like that. Maybe, but I do feel like there's something there with the when that guy comes back to life and attacks her and then for a second they become united right like the woman which is what la femme means right Mm -hmm. i assume yes yes the woman i'm just gonna keep referring to her as that she attacks him kills him so that he is not attacking sarah anymore Mm -hmm. it's yeah the baby which is what she hears more about but they they kind of join sides and when i was reading the um wikipedia summary to write my own quick summary there's stuff written in the language in the Wikipedia article that sort of insinuates that she, the woman was like, well, no, Sarah was like begging for her to get the baby out, which when I'm watching with subtitles, I did not get that. I was like, she I did get that feeling. Okay. Towards the end when she was on the stairs. Yeah. It it was that vibe of, didn't she actually? It's coming. The baby's coming. The baby's coming. There was almost like this teeming at that point of the baby's coming. And so she was there. The, the La Femme was there. And so, so, and it was almost like they were working together, right? She was pushing. She was saying, calm down, calm down. And then she's like, I think the baby's stuck. There was almost like this, now they're a team trying to get this baby out. Yeah, I. but I don't know that I picked up on that on first watch because there is no, I don't think there's any back and forth. It's just the woman saying, or sorry, it's just Sarah saying, he, the baby is coming. It feels like it's stuck. And then La Femme, I don't think she says anything. She does. She says, uh, shh. Um, she says something, something like a, to calm down or okay. sh- calm down. Um, and then Sarah's screaming for mom, mommy, mommy. And yeah. And she's like, shh, cal- you know, calm down, calm down. And I don't then- know. Maybe it's just that it wasn't explicitly spelled out for me, but I was like, I didn't really get the, the, mm-hmm. um, feeling. I mean, obviously you want your baby to survive, but she didn't like beg her. What it says in the thing is like she begs her to do what she set out to do, which is like cut the baby out of her stomach. Like, I don't know oh, that it was that. Like, I, I, she wasn't I, like, please save my baby. There's none of that. You know, no, it's just like she just says, I think it's stuck. Yeah. So the woman, right, La Femme, cuts the baby out. She doesn't out. run away though or kick her away. She does no. lay back and allow her. Yeah. But then in the, uh, again, in the same, Thing. It says that she, lo- while she holds the baby, she looks sorrowfully at Sarah. And I didn't get that either. I I didn't get that either. And half of her face is burned off. So I don't even know if I would have seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Are we supposed to even make sense of her face? But I, I felt like maybe that's what they were going for. Is this like camaraderie now that there's this common enemy of this? man and i'm saying that just because of the themes i feel like maybe that they were trying to portray is like now there's this man who's come in and tried to interrupt this thing that's happening so they unite against him the patriarchy is basically where i'm <laughs> going with oh. this. fuck the patriarchy and they're like we're gonna fucking deliver this baby i actually don't think it's that 
super kind yeah, of dry, but it, I didn't but it made feel me that. feel like maybe that was one of the themes. Oh, I hope not. I don't because know. that I don't think that would have worked. Because this has nothing to do with the patriarchy in the sense that, from my point of view, this woman is mutilating and she has the intent to kill this woman and take her baby. So I don't care what type of a cop, man or woman or whatever comes to the door. There, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> but I they're, hate, they're, but why was that even necessary? I hate the fact that he came back to life. This is one of those moments where I just feel I hated that too. Totally lost. What is happening? How did this guy, they, by the way, again, I feel like I almost did accidentally more research, maybe. <laughs> well, no, I'm sure you read the plot no, summary. that's great. I'm, I'm not saying you didn't read it, but I like, you know, I like to double check as I'm writing my summary that I'm right. Is that he um, just was blinded by some flashbang gun or whatever. One, watching the movie, you don't get that at all. I feel like it's not spelled out no enough, which might be a language barrier thing. like. You know, we may not just understand what is happening because we're reading English subtitles. But B, he could have just stayed dead. It had nothing to do with her. Like, she could have just gone into full force labor. We didn't have to have him wake up and beat her. So there has to be a reason why that happened. And I can't help but feel like that is the message. It's like this man starts to meddle in... What's happening in this? I don't know. I mean, maybe. I don't know. I, um, so I can't say with that man, I did wonder, I was very confused of what kind of a gun that was. That big, yeah, I have huge. a note here, double barreled, which huge, huge, like soda can sized. And when she shot him, it was a weird sound. It yeah. was like a sound and a flash of light. So I thought it was that, like some kind of a sound thing that maybe. And so since it was right up against his head, maybe it blew his eardrums or something like that. And so so then when he was seemed like he was dead, I was like, oh, was that like a real gun? Like what kind of a what kind of a gun was that? Um, and then when he stood up and his eyes were all like kind of blown out or like black and that was pretty creepy. I was like, okay. And then he starts hitting her and I had the same feeling. I was like, oh, is he, is he just so disoriented? He doesn't know that she's not the bad guy because she's absolutely now vividly bright red from right. blood. So does he not know that she's not the bad guy? Cause he is, you know, pretty jacked up himself. And so that's why he's hitting her. He's like defending himself. Um, but I didn't get any kind of a, that's how I read it. Was if I was, uh, first of all, I didn't like it. Yeah. And second of all, if I was going to give it any sort of credence or any, you know, going to give it a benefit of a doubt, it was, he's like blind. Who knows what's going on with his brain at this point? So this, whatever kind of gun this was, blasted his fucking eyes out, but, you know, didn't kill him. That he's just swinging and she's closest to him. And all she says is like, monsieur, you know, she's not like, yeah, you know, and he doesn't know who she is. I didn't get a patriarchy feel at all. Like these people were trying to help her, but even that when they finally get her out and why are they fucking around with trying to get the lights on in the house? There are tons of dead bodies. Yeah. Get out of the house. Just pull her out. Yeah. And how about how sad for this poor kid oh. who was picked up for whatever, like partying or something. Yeah, totally unrelated. I was like, do they really do this? There's gunshots and you're going to bring this kid that you picked up and latch him to you stupid <sighs> i was also like this makes zero sense from a cop perspective there is there's so much liability there's no way no fucking way no I, fucking way first of yeah. all it's going to be more of a hindrance yeah. you're not going to be able to move around be stealthy whatever it is the kid's blubbering of course i would be too and it, the liability aspect exactly yeah like, you cannot put this person in the line of fire of this other thing that's happening. Stupid. That that was one of the major, like, plot holes that I was just like, this... Why? Yeah. <laughs> and then him coming back to life, I just was like, is this guy a zombie all of a sudden? I have no fucking clue what is going on. It was dumb. And, and, yeah. But that's what makes me feel like there was something there that they wanted to fucking... 
you know, hit home theme wise. Uh, not that I'm saying I agree with it necessarily or that I think it was good. I just. Why put it there? You know? Yeah. I didn't know if it was just because they really, really wanted to have this horrific thing where he's bashing the or maybe that's just how it was written. Well, totally. They, no, I think that's yeah. like one of the things that, yeah, maybe somebody needed to bash the baby. Because remember that nurse was saying, oh, I was in labor my first one for 13 hours. Like it takes a, the first one takes a lot longer than the next ones. We're obviously not going to wait around for 13 hours for this baby to be born. Yeah, but I feel like we've got to be like eight hours into it to begin with not in eight hours into her labor though i don't know she, dude the first time maybe no, she maybe she, she sorry go ahead. <laughs> maybe <laughs> she peed but the first time that she gets into the bathroom i thought her water broke then it did it did but if you think about it it was it was like she fell asleep and then at one point it said it was around oh no 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 yeah think about it so it wasn't that late she goes to sleep, she wakes up, um, and this starts to happen. And then shortly after that, her friend comes over and is on his way to dinner. But her, her water has already broke, right? Because she goes into the bathroom first thing after she's attacked. And she immediately yes. starts, like, there's her water breaks. So her water breaks, but she's not having that severe contractions no, that they, often. Yeah, they don't portray the contractions, but I was immediately like, her water just broke. She's about to be in labor. But they don't really portray her as in labor through the rest of the movie, which was confusing, which made me think yeah. maybe she just peed because she was scared. I don't know. No, I think literally it was going to take a long time. It could take up to like, it could take over a day to yeah. get that baby out Even of there. Even in a hospital. You know? In a hospital. But you would be in, you would have contractions and they don't show her yeah. like having just a couple times just a couple times yeah. she goes uh but that's it yeah she seemed like she not was not regular not regular like that baby was even supposed to come out right unless you're bashed in the stomach with that pole yeah at that point we were i mean that was full on anyway oh. that was just confusing because it happened twice in the movie right and i was like i don't know and even in the summary again that's where it says her water broke when she gets hit in the stomach. I'm like, no, bro, she got hit. She, her water broke like hours earlier in the bathroom. I think the thing that is confusing to me is all of those things that I just told you about that I'm reading in the thing, which is like, oh, now they're united. And now she's looks soulfully at Sarah, who's dying on the steps. I feel like it's totally contrary to what we just watched. And there's no like character arc. She doesn't learn that what she's doing is terrible it's it's not like that's what's happening i feel like the true horror of this movie is like this person is a like single focused she's gonna get this baby that is her sole focus and that is fucking mm -hmm. terrifying and so i don't like the other idea that they like kind of team up or whatever i think it's nah. it sort of tosses out the whole premise of the movie so I'm not saying I'm a fan of that. I'm just saying that's what was written into the Wikipedia thing, which is what makes me think that maybe that's what they intended. Nah, because someone wrote it in Wikipedia. Nah. Yeah. I'm not going with that shit. Okay. <laughs> that may be totally the intention, but it'll ruin it for me. <laughs> that's fair. I can see the little bit of, okay, the baby's coming and maybe Sarah's playing on the woman's sympathy for the baby right that okay the baby's coming so maybe this woman is not going to try to you know uh kill me for a moment because the baby's coming right so now we're united in the sense that i need to have this baby born this woman wants the baby to be born right we at least so have something in common yeah let's stop killing let's stop beating the shit of each other let's like get this baby born um but that the woman but then again, Sarah doesn't do anything. Okay. So when you're in labor, it's not like you've become completely incapacitated where you can't use your limbs, your legs, your, it, it hurts, but it's not like you now cannot move. Like you're paralyzed Yeah. where, so if someone came with a pair of scissors towards your belly 
uh, you might hit them or kick them or, and then try to drag yourself. I mean, you're not just going to lay back and go like, let's do this. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, she could use her hands and her feet. I know she's in a lot of pain, but I mean, I feel like there, you could have tried something else. Like the woman didn't really look down there, like maybe put her hand yeah. This is what the doctors do. Put her hand in there. See if you can feel the baby's head. Are you able to help? Pull? She's not a fucking doctor. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's, this is where we start getting, I think, real. Maybe like call the, please, please, please. Call, well, which obviously she's not going to call the hospital. Because what, it, but, I mean, like, I don't know what she would have done either, though. Like, as the woman delivering the baby, I could see how you would be so scared that this baby can't be delivered because you can't really have a baby stuck for too long, right? If they get stuck in the wrong position for too long, you can oh, they die. kill yeah. them. Yeah. The baby can die, yeah. So I can see how uh, the thought process is like, even if I fight this woman off, even if I manage to fight this woman off and subdue her long enough to get out of my house and down the street to somebody else who can call the ambulance that's going to come pick me up or whatever, is that going to be enough time to get my baby out in a safe way. So the other thought is that she did team up. They did team up in the sense she realized she was beaten. Sarah, everything Tawny just said, there's like no possible way for me to even save this baby. Even if I get away from this woman, which is going to take what more fighting. Like, yeah. it, like how long is that going to take before I can even get out to get help? So she sacrificed herself to save the baby. Yeah. I, I think and she that's... just, and they teamed up in the sense that they are not best friends now. I don't think the sympathy thing, like, I don't even know. I don't yeah. know, maybe, but I can see that aspect of, all right, you won. Let's work together to get this baby, which is going to be my life. So she sacrificed herself to save her child. Yeah. Like, let's just save the baby. That's the mm, yeah. thing that's important to both of us in this moment. Okay. Oh, I like this. Okay. I could go with this. I could gel with this. And so then she's sad because that was her only option in order to save her baby. That was her only option. Yeah. Which is obviously not a good option. Yeah. <laughs> right. And but she's hoping, like you said in the beginning, that maybe the woman will get caught. The baby will be able to find a good home eventually. Something happens to. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I don't mind that. I like that. Hmm. And if the woman with the burned up face that I don't know how anyone saw there was sympathy in her eyes, but if maybe if it was written in the script, if she even did look at Sarah and it was sympathy, sympathy, maybe it was more like you lost bitch. I don't know. I can't imagine this woman has any sympathy for Sarah. Come Me on. either. I went back and watched it again because I was like, did I miss something? But no, I mean, there's just it fades to black after you see the gush of blood on the stairs so visceral so yeah. much and then it just fades up from black and she's walking with the baby and she goes to the chair and sits down like i just don't there's no way to see any facial expression or what i i don't know i mean again one of her eyes isn't even really working so yeah, like, like we can't see <laughs> yeah, her facial <laughs> like expression literally we can't see your facial expressions <laughs> god Oh, I liked when La Femme was sitting in the hallway going crazy. There was that moment where they did like, um, they were just focused on her. She was outside the door. She was sitting on the ground, kicking the door. Then it was her face. And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And it was like this weird, like kind of like, <laughs> that's all how I can explain it. And she was like calm and then ah, angry. And that was, I thought that was cool. I did too. I think did they that. did a good job there. There was yeah, this. It wasn't like the typical, just weird, this weird, your head shaking really fast that they do in horror movies. Yeah. And Jacob's it ladder. Dope. No, it wasn't that. Jeez. It was fucking, yeah, it was different. And I liked it too. I thought it was a good creative choice. I, I feel like there's a lot of that that works really well in this movie. But one of the things, can I say that I fucking hated that I wish they would have just ditched is the sound effect of like a pig dying or some kind of oh. screeching. Every time something like violent happens, they play this sound over the top of it. And she's like, sure. It's like way worse than that though. It's, it's, it is like a, 
cat, a big cat screeching or something. A pig being like killed. A rawr, rawr. It's, it's like fucking. Yeah. yeah. At first, when they first did it, it was when um, La Femme was in. I don't know if that's the first when they did it, I think. But when I noticed it, she was in the hallway and she held her ears. And that's kind of when she, and then it kind of stopped. And so I thought, oh, this is like something with her head going crazy. But then it kept happening when Sarah was in the bathroom, like constantly, just this screeching, this sound. Yeah, I didn't like that. Yeah, it was. Uh, I feel like I I get it, but it was it was distracting more than it was putting us in the mindset of the people who were in the movie. Or I don't know. It just was. It got to be really annoying. I fucking was not a fan of that. I agree. I wasn't either. I have a question about. Um, so, kind of going back to what you were talking about. So the cops are there. And at first, when this cop's yelling at her, just calm down, stop crying, just fuck, calm down. I was getting really irritated. I'm like, have you seen her? And she's pregnant. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, maybe this guy just it doesn't react well under stress. First of all, he has this kid vomiting and crying attached to him, which I have unlatched the damn kid. Um, he's this woman is trying to kill them, and this pregnant woman is crying, and so he's probably just losing his shit right there. So I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Um, but he's like, let's get out of the house. She could have gotten out of the house at that point. Yeah. Cause she could have went downstairs and at least gotten out of the house. Um, and the, the fucking cops would have tried to turn on the lights. So stupid, but they would have been dicking around trying to turn on the lights. She could have been making her way out the door and, um, had done that. Instead, she goes and lies down in the bed. Right. So part of me, when she had the gun right by her, I was like, oh, Maybe she's going to act like she has died or Me something yep. and shoot the woman. Yep. Fuck. No. 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 Nope. She bites her lip and then rolls on the ground. I was also like, you're just going to leave that gun? That's like the best weapon you've had yeah. so far. She could have had one of her hands underneath the sheet and laid there like that, which was a cool shot, I must say, with her hair and the blood yeah. on the white bed from above, and then acted just like you were pretty much dying. Obviously, she would know you were dead because she would, you know, hear you breathing and stuff when she was crawling all over you, making out with you. Right. She jumped on you, was making out with you, but she was, uh, you know, so wrapped up in licking your face, you could have just pulled out that gun. Boom. Done. Exactly. You don't done. even. I, that's the thing is like you don't even need to have it under the sheet. You could just have your hand on the gun. Mm -hmm. And pretend like you're dead. And this lady's going to come in and do whatever she does. Boom. Shoot her I just head. thought if one of your hands was under the sheet, that the fact that the woman didn't even notice the gun was there. Right. That, you know, um, yeah, done. I mean, they had more to do with the movie, but I'm just saying that was a part where I was very let down. Because yeah. all she bit her and then she kind of crawled out of the room. And I was like, what? You had a fucking gun. Even beyond that, she doesn't grab the gun, take it with her. It's the best yeah. weapon you've got. So then it made me think, oh, this is very clever to why the fuck did you lie down in the bed? Right. And again, this is something that I don't know if I'm just paying way too much attention to or trying to make it into something it's not. But after this, they start facing off in the kitchen and I wrote down. And again, I don't know if I like this or if I fucking hate it because it's too over the <laughs> over the over the head hitting over the head with the symbolism or whatever <laughs> i felt like all of their weapons were sort of like traditionally feminine types mm. of weapons yes because we have scissors which N knitting needles yep needle knitting needles we have hair like hairspray or something some sort of cleaning product right aerosol that sprays her we have a toaster and the mm. knife which has to do with cooking and the thing the hair the, accessory the chopstick hair accessory yeah and then the um pole that she puts the knife into is a vacuum thing it's like a <sighs> vacuum accessory oh, and so i was like part of me feels like i want to like that because i wrote down that it's a you know complete rejection of those traditional uh gender role type things maybe maybe oh yeah oh i like that tawny yeah but you know, again, it doesn't really go anywhere. It's not like, I, I feel like that's not the point of the movie. Maybe, maybe it is. 
you know. Yeah, because she doesn't use the gun when she clearly has the gun right there. Yeah. By her hand, which would be typically, I think, thought of a more but with this, male cops and the gun. This is another one of those moments where it's like, you know, this is it's like they, or are they just household items that are in every house and she's utilizing the household items? Maybe. I Maybe. like your take on it better. It's more yeah. interesting. Because otherwise, why not just let her use the gun? You know, like I I feel the same way about the male cop. Why not just let her be in labor? Why reintroduce this character to hit her in the stomach? Why reintroduce all of these household items to fight with? Unless there's some sort of like message or thing that you're trying to get across. And in that way, it feels really like ham fisted. Like, I, I don't know that I, I, I feel like I want to like it for the themes, but I can't like it because it feels too clunky. Empowering women with uh, all the stuff they use around the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> they to turn kill it into other? weapons. <laughs> sure. Interesting. Okay. I think you really brought some good shit. I'm glad I didn't do any research. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we haven't talked about this, which I did like, and I thought was such a fucking baller move that I wrote in my notes, holy shit, final girl of the fucking year is what I wrote when this happened. She gives herself a tracheotomy. Yeah, totally. And then wraps her neck up with tape. <laughs> this was so baller to yeah. me. Yeah, she's all jacked up. She's in labor. She can't breathe. Gives herself a tracheotomy. Stands up. The blood is just squirting out. Wraps duct tape around it, which that just brings me back to freaking green room when his arm is sliced up and he wrapped it with duct tape. (laughs) But anyways, wraps duct tape around her neck, and you know, makes the the vacuum spear Spear. (laughs) and is ready to go. Yeah, I think it would have been more. I mean, it's really hard. I feel like it would have been really satisfying if she lived and she stabbed the shit out of that woman that's been hunting her down. But then you wouldn't get the epic stomach cutting scene. Right. You know, that's that's the whole premise that the movie is based on is we got to see a baby get cut out of a stomach. So we got to go there. But I the the self tracheotomy, I have so many fucking questions. Number one. If you gave yourself one, I was, I was for this too. I was like, damn, this is smart. Great, great job. But I was like, if you give yourself one, why the fuck would you keep laying on your back? I literally wrote, <laughs> this is my note. You're going to aspirate that shit and get blood pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Roll over onto your side, like force the blood out of your you know, the hole that you just made. And why would you now cover it with duct tape? Isn't that, doesn't that defeat the purpose? Isn't the point of the tracheotomy that your trachea you put a tube, right? is collapsed? Yeah. And you, you put a hole in so that you can breathe through it. Why would you then cover up the hole? Oh, I thought it got the, all the shit out and then she could use her. I don't know how it works. Oh. Um, I should have looked that up. I, I thought it was clogged or something. Yeah. And so then the stuff came out and she closed it. Cause then also you're cutting through your neck. Like you don't want to bleed out there. Cause then she was able to talk and everything and breathe. Yeah. After she covered that, she was able to talk and breathe. Well, you wouldn't bleed out if you just pierced a thing through your hair. Yeah. Cause this is like, this oh, is your this windpipe. Is- right here mm. it's it's right there oh, at the you're surface. right there's people that have like who've been smokers that have that thing there huh yeah that, oh yeah you'd have yeah, to yeah you're right puncture your jugular which is on like the side. she did her mom yeah yeah she, oh exactly spurted blood super gross um <laughs> i liked that spurting me too I, you don't see that often I and feel you see like time. stomach gets stabbed. There's some blood and then they're down. And this was just like squirt, squirt, it's squirting on the walls as she's walking down the squirt, squirt. <laughs> so gross. It was gross. But you don't see that type of stuff often. Yeah. I liked it. 
so yeah, you're right about that. So, so did I, you're right about the tracheotomy though. I did think when she was, so this was me giving her the benefit of the doubt. I don't know anything. I don't really know. I I've don't either. seen people do, Oh, if someone's choking, you could do a tracheotomy. And I'm like, I hope I'm never ever in that fucking position where I have to give someone a tracheotomy. Yeah. But I I've seen that in movies and stuff. And I know about, you can do that. But yeah, usually maybe you leave like a straw in there or something. <laughs> exactly, dude. That's where right? I'm pulling my knowledge from is from Saw. In one of the Saw movies, I can't remember oh. which, there, this guy, I can't remember his name, but I won't say it anyway because I think it's a spoiler, takes apart a pen and there's just like the, the hollow part oh. of a pen, shoves it into his trachea. Because he, it, like his head's in a um, bunch of water, and so he closes his mouth, and he breathes and through he his breathes through his throat, because that's how you're getting up. air into your lungs. I've never, I haven't seen this saw. You haven't seen? I think it's like not that one. I because I don't remember that at all. Okay, I thought Ooh. it was one of the earlier ones. I thought it was two or three, maybe. Oh, but I watched all three. I've watched the first three. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's later, but yeah, there's a self tracheotomy there and it is like, it's a straw, right? So that he can breathe through his throat. Yeah, because even, yeah. Anyway, we're getting real deep in this, we're in the weeds. (laughs) Anyway, I just had so many questions about that specifically. I was like, this doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, why did she cover it up? Yeah. If you guys know, let us know in the comments. (laughs) Don't be aspirating that blood. I also had the same thought when she had that fever dream way early in the movie where she was throwing up and she like rolled over on her back. I was like, bitch, don't roll on your back. What are you doing? I was like, you're gonna die. I did. I did say that when she rolled on her back, I was like, oh shit, she's gonna die now. Get on your side. Get on your side. But it was a dream. So yeah. Well, but, obviously, she probably did that in real life since she did it with the tracheotomy situation. I guess so, but shit, anybody <laughs> out there, if you're ever throwing up, fucking roll on her side. I look down and I have a note that went that literally says, oh, like, oh, with H, 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 H. I took the time to write that <laughs> and then I underlined it. And I believe that's when she was telling her that I was in the car accident and I lost Yeah, did my you baby. see that coming? I did not see that coming. Did I you? I did not. Nope. No. Nope. Watching this movie, there was no thought in my mind that there would be a twist of any kind. Like, I just was like, this is a cut and dry movie. This lady is here to take this baby, <laughs> like the end. And so when it was revealed, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, I thought the same. Um, My last little thing that I noticed that I'm going to tack on to yours is immediately I wrote down for the woman. I said, these fucking sleeves cannot be practical. <laughs> I'm so fucking glad you're so <laughs> It's so fucking flat. She had like wide. What are those called? <laughs> okay, are they called? It. <laughs> are they called bell sleeves? Not, I don't know if they're called bell sleeves because bell sleeves come in. I think these were like these were like bat wing sleeves, and yes. I was just like, no way. They're getting near her way. Like, and also on on this note, she had like a fucking leather corset. That she took off at some point. I'm like, why are you dressed up? She It looks like she has a fucking Halloween costume on. I am so glad you said this because this was also my last piece of notes I took. I said, what is this lady wearing? It's not very mobile. This fucking medieval times garb. Yep. <laughs> she looked like she was going. She just came home from the Renaissance Fair. Yep. Yep. Why on earth? This is nothing mobile about it. This long black dress that had a train, like it dragged. Yeah. Long, open, whatever, boho, (laughs) (laughs) medieval time sleeves, a corset. Like this is heels. This is not no mobile. I'm going to start getting to a fight here. You're going to want to wear like leggings, some types of pants. I don't know, some kind of pants. Yeah, like something. You would. <laughs> you're going to want to be mobile. You're not going to want to. Okay, I'm going to be. We, let's all flash back to Halloween. Tight, tight clothes. Tight clothes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When I was dressed up like <laughs> with the fucking long ass sleeves, uh, Oren Chi. 
<laughs> oh, Renishi. Oh, Renishi. Sorry. Oh, Renishi. And I had those long sleeves. I'm just sitting at a podcasting desk and I was rolling over those sleeves with yeah. my chair. Mm-hmm. I'm not about to go murder people yep. in these sleeves. First thing, I'm going to take some scissors. Those scissors I'm carrying around. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cut my fucking sleeves. Me too. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Three fourths sleeves. <laughs> Goodbye. Yes, which is silly because she didn't even need to wear that outfit as far as we know, unless literally she just went to the the Renaissance Fair and was like, you or know Halloween. what? I well, it was Christmas though. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. Oh. It's a costume. <laughs> she had it left over. She said, you know what? I'm gonna go over there as a witch. Okay. I was thinking <laughs> She was at the Renaissance Fair and she wasn't sure. Here's the story. Yes, sir, Felicia. She wasn't that sure. in winter. Both of our scenarios are equally well, unreasonable. Either she dressed up in that shit to go do this. And it's really, really um, not um, practical. Right. It was a <laughs> look. She, she was at the freaking Renaissance Fair. <laughs> she's driving home. She's had this idea of doing this. And she's like, you know what? Right Tonight's now? the night. I am doing it. I am doing it. Maybe she had some ale. <laughs> she had ale and a turkey wing. Yeah, big old turkey leg. And she was like, you know what? A turkey leg. That's right. The big old drumstick. And she was like, tonight's the night. Fuck it. And she went over there. I will say visually, it's interesting, right? Like, I like that she's this all black hair curtain. Right. Her, because again, her hair is like down the whole time. Not practical. Mm-hmm. She can't see shit. What the fuck can you do when your hair's down? Nothing. A couple French braids. Put gotta, it back. Yeah, up a bun. Throw that shit in a blunt bun. Whatever. She can't see anything through her hair, but she's doing it anyway. <laughs> Great. I kind of liked it from a visual aspect, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was dumb. <laughs> it was dumb. I didn't like not the practical. outfit for sure because I I wrote it here. I wrote this is not practical. It's not very mobile. Why are you wearing this medieval type garb? We this is what we need. Even though this scratched my itch for um a female slasher, we need a better female slasher than this. This was great, She's best so I've ever cool. seen. Yeah, agreed. But we need like a step up from this. Like a little smarter on the wardrobe choice. Yeah, yeah. Hair in a bun. Maybe a vest. You know, she's Down staying for business. Warm, but she's yeah. out here slaying. I'm here. I'm not going to trip over my gown. Everything's tight. Yeah. No DNA. I'm probably going to wear a pair of like nice leather knee high boots or something. Yeah. Or sneakers or sneakers. Um, sneakers is something. a good choice. Yeah. Something like I just feel real leather agile. Boots <laughs> is real great. <laughs> No gotcha. heels though. No heels. Just no heels. Flat. flat. Yep. Flat. Mm-hmm. This heel thing. No. No. Not working. Hair pulled back. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. Gloves. She was wearing gloves. Then she took them off. Yeah. Immediately. Mm-hmm. No medieval times garb. <laughs> no corsets. Corset? Are you so uncomfortable? Have you worn a corset? I've worn yes. a corset before. I have it too. Is tight and uncomfortable. So uncomfortable. Yeah. You cannot this is- move. No, this is not, I'm ready to kick some ass no. in my corset. We should do it, Felicia. Let's write a story. Yeah, we should. A powerful, actually scary female slasher, scary AF. Okay, everybody stay tuned. <laughs> Toddy and I are going to team up. We're going to write something. And it's going to have like real reactions that the characters would make. Yeah. So people feel <clears throat> like, oh yeah, I get that. And scary, a scary, scary female slasher. Mm-hmm. I like but it. As much shit as we just talked about her wardrobe, I will say this is the scariest female slasher I have ever seen. Yeah, she was unhinged and I was scared. I literally from the beginning didn't feel like Sarah had a chance. Me either. Like I thought, well, let me rephrase. I thought she might have a chance because i thought maybe she would live after this whole thing because typically yeah. someone lives you know um but that there is a very strong likely she might not this woman was strong i'm surprised this woman couldn't be it couldn't actually break down the bathroom door just so good dude she was so scary so scary. so scary and this woman is in such a vulnerable state like you said earlier this is gonna sound stupid like i'm joking but I'm kind of not, 
when she stumbled down to the front door and she couldn't even get the door open, you know, it was like stuck. I, I, for a half second, I thought that's stupid. And then I thought, you know what? No, I know what it's like to not have eaten all day. Again, this sounds like I'm joking, but I'm not. And you're like weak as fuck. If you haven't eaten enough food, if you haven't drank enough water, you're fucking weak as hell. Now, add Mm -hmm. to that, you're fucking nine months pregnant. You just went into labor or you've been in labor for several hours. Yep. Nothing to eat. You're fucking terrified. Your adrenaline has spiked and now you're probably crashing from it, right? Mm Mm-hmm. To some your degree. hand was stabbed. Your hand was stabbed. You're totally fucked. What kind your of face was stabbed? Your belly yeah. button was stabbed. Oh yeah, exactly. You're totally. <laughs> fu- I forgot about all those injuries. You are it, just gushing blood. You've killed your mom. You've killed your mom emotionally. Yes. You're totally wrecked. What the your fuck? Be- your best friend, your boss, dead. He's dead. The, you don't That's stand draining. I thought Thanksgiving was draining. That's why by, That's exactly. <laughs> by the moment she gets down to the front door and she can't get it open, I was like, yep. I didn't even have a problem with it. I was like, yep, you'd be fucking exhausted. I don't even know how this woman is continuing on at this point. She has Nina in four hours. <laughs> I'm Dude, done. I'm done for And you're right about that because I've been pregnant three times. And when you're hungry, you're hungry. Yeah. That's why when she did it, I was like, it's just locked. Unlock the door. Um, I gave her the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I was like, well, but then I thought maybe go out the back door. I don't know. You'd have to go into the kitchen. If you just go into the kitchen, now you need to be prepared to fight because you're just sitting on the kitchen floor and the yeah, woman is what, alive. Are you just going to wait to die? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. There's the dueling feelings there i wonder how long your will to survive lasts yeah before you just say fuck it because she did she was like well she didn't fully because you know she did the tracheotomy we got to see all that cool stuff but i Hmm. don't know it's interesting i don't know if she thought she'd just be running down the street but she had neighbors but I know everyone was at Christmas parties and she said that part of the neighborhood's really quiet. So maybe the woman would have just slaughtered her in the street. But yeah, what about this is something that I had a question for you on. What do you think about the backdrop of the whole city being in unrest? There's like riots happening. Yeah. I, I was like, what is the point of this? Yeah, I did wonder about that. Because at first there was this piece, like she was, I'm, I'm, I believe she was a photojournalist is kind of the vibe I got from that. And he really wanted her to be covering this. It also put it in a, um, put the whole environment in a state of fear, prompting why he stopped by early, but not really. He could have, as a friend, stopped by early. No riots are happening. She's just very very apparently depressed and struggling and doesn't want anyone around. So that was enough to have him stop by just to make sure she was feeling okay. Yeah. You didn't even need it to be a safety issue because of the riots. I didn't feel like they connected, but it could have absolutely been that I just missed it. I feel the same way. I feel like I don't know what that had to do with everything else but they like bring it up several times in the beginning of the movie and i almost felt like maybe this is their way of saying like this is why the cops aren't involved but the cops are involved like i don't they're very involved they they went by the first time then they actually circled back around like they said they would yeah and patrolled and then checked on her not only did they not just drive by they stopped in and checked on her and they were keen enough to say oh you're not the woman they went back exactly. because you're not pregnant so the cops were on point that's why it's hard for me with the patriarchy angle because they were well the first set of cops that weren't all men there was a woman and then a couple of men right um and then the next group was a car full of men but they were helping her and they were smart and yeah. they risked their lives to save her. So why would this be screw 
the patriarchy. Yeah, at all this, of a sudden. It, within the story, within yeah. the story, why would it be that? Yeah. Because even her friend who was a man and who apparently was her only close friend. Yeah. Who loved and cared for her so much that he was the one she wanted taking her to her appointment to have her baby the next morning. And her relationship with her, her boyfriend, her husband looked very loving, right? With yeah. all the pictures and then how he came up behind her and was, you know, that image of him kissing her neck and stuff like that. So it's like a lot of good experiences with men being loving. So why now are we flipping to fuck men in this movie context? Yeah, in the last like third of it. Yeah. yeah. And all of these men, by the way, that risk their life trying to save her. Like that doesn't read through to me. I don't get that. At yeah. All. That's a good point. I don't, I don't think it fits. And I don't think it fits in the, like when I brought it up originally, it's so right there in the moment. It's, it's so like right now, this is what's happening. And yeah, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just like, I, I'm along for the ride. <laughs> yeah. You brought up some real great shit, though. You brought up some really, I've just been cursing a lot unnecessarily. You've been doing really good this episode, though. You haven't cursed very much, so I've been taking note. Um, this is, uh, you brought some really, really good stuff. We got to rate this bad boy. Oh, so nervous. I am as well. I do not know what I want to do with it. And after our conversation, I kind of felt like, oh, you know what? I'm going to feel better about what I'm rating this. Mm, I don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel any more <laughs> better about this. So, so Tawny, what would you rate this movie? I think I'm going to give this movie a 3.5. Oh, <gasps> nice. That is a great score from Tawny Ray. I'm shocked at how shocked you are. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure by our conversation. Like, you know what I mean? We kind of wavered a lot back and forth. I mean, forth. yeah, we shit on it a lot. Mm, but that, but she's such a great, scary. Yeah, I know. She really saves it. I feel like that's the thing mm. is like. I can't help but like this movie, even though I kind of hate it. I really wish there had been more moments of just not crazy, gory shit happening. Like, I feel like it it really overdid it in the gore sector. You know, I, I just it started to lose its punch and I. I do feel like there was pieces where it was like, oh, we're doing this. We are throwing away a logical choice. Yeah. That Sarah would make so that we can get this really disturbing scene of this cop beating the crap out of a pregnant woman. So we want this disturbing scene in it. How do we get it? Totally shoved in. Because here. obviously La Femme is not going to beat the shit out of, she doesn't want to hurt the baby. Right. So how do we do this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think so it's my, worth a watch. I'm sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. you. No, please saying, explain. I give it no. a 3.5 because I think it's worth a watch, but I cannot give it the same level that like A Nightmare on Elm Street. I give a 3.6. I liked that more. And, you know, like I can't give it a four or anything. I don't think I liked it that much, but I can't go down to a 2.75. That's what I gave Amityville Horror. These are my, our most recent episodes or Dreamcatcher <laughs> or Halloween Kills. I gave all of those a 2.75. I, I liked it more than that. Nice. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. What did you give it? No, I loved your explanation. So the score I gave it, and I just wanted to make sure, is a 3.25. Mm. Um, because what I was looking at is it's really hard because I did like it more than Dreamcatcher. Um, I know I gave Amityville Horror a 3.25, but there were things I liked about Amityville Horror and was hard because above that, a 3.5, some of the stuff I have at 3.5, I, I liked more than this movie. So very close, very close. When I watched it the first time, I gave it a 3. 
And then after thinking about it more and talking through just like how excited I got about how badass this scary ass character was, she was so terrifying and all of this, it raised it up a little, but yeah, that's where I land. 3.25. Okay. Yeah, we're close. We are very close. I kind of compared her to um, Asami from Audition, but Asami is much more of a sympathetic character, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. Than this woman. This woman is scary. (laughs) It was a fun watch. I think it's worth a watch, even though it's really gory. Don't watch it with anybody else. That's yeah. People will judge you for sure if they think these are the movies you're watching every week. (laughs) Exactly. Next, okay, so next week we're taking a break. So we're gonna we're gonna be like kind of fluid in the month of December. So you have this, and then we felt you needed a break. Because if you're watching along with us, if you (laughs) are a lot die hard fans that watch the movie so then you can participate fully with us on discord and chat about it with us and then watch and then i mean i'm sorry and then listen to our episode we feel you need a little break yeah so next week is your break go back and listen to one of our other episodes that you haven't heard yet something a little lighter like from when we first started and then we're going to come back at you the following week with martyrs so that will be our next episode and So that will be on the 15th of December. We are going to be joined by the fabulous gentleman from a podcast on Elm Street. So we're very excited for this. And I'm really excited. I know you are too, Tawny. I'm really excited because they're really excited to talk about this movie. Oh, yeah. They brought it to us. And this was something we wanted to see. Yeah. I've been waiting years, (laughs) years to watch this movie. And I just haven't had like the push, you know, to watch it. And so I think it's going to be real good. I don't want to get my, you know, expectations too high. I'm going to keep them low. But this is a legendary movie. Yes. That we're going to watch. And I'm stoked about it. Yeah. We're really stoked. Then we're going to take two weeks off for winter break. We'll post the schedule. You'll see. You'll know where to find us and when we'll be releasing. Uh, So please do check out some other episodes and then we'll be coming back at you at the end of the month to do our Two Chicks and a Horror Flick year in review. So very excited about that. If you want to follow us, connect with us, whatever it might be, you can go to twochicksandahorrorflick.com. From there, that will lead you to wherever you want to go, whether it's that horror community I just mentioned, Instagram any of our social profiles, whatever it is, Instagram's a good hub as well, because we always post our schedule and everything else, little audio clips, super fun. And what else, Tawny? If you want to support the show, you can go to our Patreon. We're there. Or you can like and subscribe and share this podcast if you like it. And, uh, you know, Apple Podcasts is like the best way to do that. So hit us up over there. But yeah, that's it. So we will see you guys next week. And we hope you have such a good night and great holidays. And also no nightmares.